Hello and welcome to the Earthly Roots podcast where we chat all things gardening, homesteading and connecting to nature. We're your hosts Diane and Robin. The Earthly Roots podcast acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. All right, so what are we chatting about today? So we are chatting all things sustainability. It's Mm -hmm. a really big topic to be starting out with, but I think we're going to have an awesome conversation uh, and go in different directions because it's kind of in line with a lot of we do, a lot of things we do really. It is. It's perfect for homesteading, perfect for gardening and everyday life. And it's actually the end of July right now as we're recording this. So it's a perfect time to talk about it because it's kind of been on my radar for the last month, especially. Um, So yeah, yeah, it's going to be a fun conversation, a few things to unpack um, and yeah, big topic to delve into. Exactly. I think maybe we could start with by, I'd like to ask you, what does sustainability mean to you? And maybe we can chat a little bit about the actual meaning of it. Yeah, because I think yeah. I, this is really interesting because a lot of people I don't think could define sustainability in so few words because it is so big. Like sustainability to me looks very different than it might to you, mm-hmm. than it might to my family or someone else out there in the world. And To me personally, sustainability means making choices in your life that um, have a positive impact on the world, that have a low carbon footprint, uh, that aren't causing more harm to the environment Mm. than uh, necessary, really. Yeah, Yeah. that's pretty much similar how I kind of see it. I, I really see it as you know, making sure my actions currently don't compromise, Mm. um, you know, future generations' actions and how people would like to live in the future. Um, But it's just become such like a buzzword recently and there's there's so much, you know, about sustainability and it's thrown around everywhere. I feel like everyone's definitely heard it and have their own definition, but it's definitely like an overwhelming subject, I think, or at least I was a little bit overwhelmed when, you know, we said, oh, maybe we should talk about sustainability because there's so many different directions that it can go in. And different opinions from people on what sustainability looks like. Exactly. And I think that can be quite quite scary from our perspective when we're opening ourselves up talking about what sustainability looks like and feels like to us Um, because in a way others might not agree or they might agree to an extent and I think let's approach it like no one else is listening no one else is watching because it is a topic that I personally really care about and I want to be able to voice what it means yeah yeah so speaking so if you feel that way do you kind of remember a point in your life that maybe you Mm. started to change your habits to become more of this environmentally conscious person and (laughs) yeah I like that the sound of that conscious person (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah so um my earliest experiences of sustainability and what that might look like actually came from a family that I babysat for and I remember watching the mum and just the choices that she was making in her life like instead of using candles she was right into essential oils for fragrance Mm. and um she baked and cooked a lot of her own food instead of going out and buying things and so instead of buying a packet of cookies or like popcorn in little packets for the kids she would get me as the babysitter because I was like Mm. a nanny Mm. to bake cookies or um, treats that the kids would take to school and it's such that sounds like such a simple beginning to sustainability but that's what I hope that you guys listening and watching today um, can kind of get out of this that everyone's journey and where it begins can be quite simple Like for me, it was just experiencing someone else take a simple step. And in the process, I was able to move from a pretty unsustainable lifestyle. Like as a teenager, I had no care, no thought about what I was using, like the products going on my skin, the things I was eating. Um, Like 
I would get takeaway that many times in a week and I would um, like even just the thought of putting fake tin on now, knowing what's probably in that product and that's getting washed away into uh, the drains and just the plastic packaging like now makes me feel really conscious of the decisions I was making back then. But back then I didn't know. Yeah. And it's important to to not feel guilty about, you know, things that you've done back then. But the world and society has changed so much in just the last few years, I feel. I agree, yeah. And I feel like social media has just ballooned with all of this sustainability talk. And I know eco-anxiety is a major thing right now that people are trying to grapple with. And it's a real thing because people are struggling in the world and people are being directly affected by, you know, how humans have lived for the past you know, 150 years in particularly, um, and are now seeing the the effects. And I think, you know, coming back to what we can do and how we can be more sustainable is, is a good, is a good thing we should be chatting about. Yeah. So you mentioned the word, um, I can't remember the word now, eco, eco anxiety. Yeah. Can you define that? Like, what do you mean by eco anxiety? Yeah. So I feel like it, um, just means, you know, feeling anxious about environmental, um, things going on or environmental disasters and environmental change like global warming climate change and feeling like you're not doing enough yeah or feeling like there's no hope like a lot of people are just so overwhelmed and it is so disheartening and horrific to see the impact of all of the bushfires that have happened around you know where we are right now yeah flooding as well this year has been a major thing all of these in these events that you know you don't really think about you know yeah. that they might happen and then they happen all at once it's like okay we've got to do something yeah now. or even just that idea that global warming doesn't just mean that everything starts to get hot and we have more fires it does also mean that um you know you've got more flooding and places that are normally hot might feel cold or it just means that our world is feeling unnatural in in a sense that yeah. things that should be happening aren't happening. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. we are, as humans have really impacted the earth and there's yeah. there's so much science and evidence that we are directly having an impact yeah. on this planet. And but that's good to recognize. Yeah, it's yeah. good to know that we are contributing to both the problem and hopefully the solution. Yeah. And so sustainability months and initiatives like Plastic Free July, I think are a really good first step for those who are feeling overwhelmed. Because three years ago, I would say is where I started making the big shifts to sustainability and changing over what I was doing. And I wanted to also just mention that to me, sustainability uh, doesn't just, it's not defined by having sustainable products or avoiding plastic or, you know, always making your own products because you might not have the time or the ability to make things. Yeah. And a lot of the time sustainability, it it's kind of, under the category of of seeing things as they're finite so you know you have to do everything and recycle everything Mm -hmm. and do everything that you can because otherwise there's there's no hope but there's other ways to be sustainable like being sustainable on the homestead and Mm -hmm. you know growing your own food and other things like that and really just having a sustainable lifestyle rather than just switching to like different sustainable products which is more kind of the materialistic side of sustainability yeah yeah that's so much to it there is so many ways that you can approach sustainability i mean the product side of things is honestly it may not be helpful in the Mm. long term because if you think about it if you're throwing away products that are working fine let's say like a plastic toothbrush or um, an electric toothbrush because this is something that I'm struggling with right now so I have an electric toothbrush which of course is made of plastic and um, every time I have to buy heads for it is contributing to more waste and resources being used and taken out Mm. from the earth to create that thing Um, but it's something that I know is really useful in my life it's really practical for me it does the job it needs to Mm. I wouldn't go and just throw it away when it's working as it should but what I am conscious of is the next time that I have to replace the heads I can then move away from this plastic product and this unsustainable resource 
to instead bring over a bamboo toothbrush into my life. And I think there's a few swaps that we can make in our lives to go from um, the products we are using to what we can use without just throwing them away straight away. So I think something that we can all do if we are wanting to buy eco-friendly products is just to consider whether it's necessary to throw things away right away. Um, or whether you can wait until it breaks or you need to replace it before then Mm. making a more conscious choice of what you then replace it with. Like, what is it made from? Yeah, which a lot of other generations have previously done in the past. We're just really spoiled for choice right now with It's always convenience. Yeah, Yeah. the the newest brand new thing to add to the collection. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense. I mean, it goes back to our parents. We're raised by our grandparents who probably lived a very sustainable, simple life just for the fact that a lot of things weren't in existence for them. So they had to live a simple life that had very simple ingredients or resources being used that were really natural. Mm. But then as industry happened and our world moved forward with technology and things that we were able to do make and achieve we then got spoiled with that convenience and that's what our parents lived through which you know if anything it means our parents really cared for us and they wanted us to have a nice easy life but now we're growing up um, because we're a similar age and we've talked about that before we're growing up now in an age where we're becoming aware that the choices and the products and the things we're using are actually having an ongoing impact into the future and there just isn't enough of certain resources to sustain the life that we're all living as humans especially if we then go to have kids and then what kind of world are we leaving for them yeah I think as a population we it's it's you know, time to act. Like we really need to be doing something and changing the way a lot of us live and doing meaningful, small little changes is something that, you know, I think we can definitely do. And I mean, speaking of which, like we're on a homestead right now and you have a beautiful property and garden, which kind of (laughs) I'm excited to to get out (laughs) into soon. But um, do you think, you know, living this way, I'm sure it does, but how, how do you think it kind of Um, goes hand in hand with the concept of sustainability because you're obviously you're not living the life that a lot of people do right now Um, this is very different from many (laughs) yeah but I feel like it's got so many um, similarities with this topic of sustainability do you want to maybe we could point out a few of those yeah so one of the easiest things to see when you look at our homestead and Um, then connecting it back to sustainability and making use of the resources we have Um, we've been able to cut out the middleman so we've been able to cut out the transport that brings the meat or the vegetables to us because we're essentially growing it right behind us in our backyard Um, we also we raise our own meat and this is probably one of the biggest shifts and changes that we have made for sustainability because when we started learning and researching about how our meat was raised because we love eating meat like and i know it's not for everyone but this is something that we feel passionate and we enjoy consuming but when we started researching into how it was produced how it was raised and how it was then brought to our freezers it was horrifying like it's enough to turn anyone vegan or vegetarian I don't blame people that choose to go down that route because it is really awful to see Mm. so instead of us feeling awful feeling guilty or trying to remove our idea and like have this ignorant ignorance is bliss (laughs) kind of mindset we wanted to take that responsibility so it's hard it's hard work I'm not going to lie and say that raising our meat is beautiful and it's a joyful experience the whole time like our animals get out they literally got out 15 minutes before Robin arrived here and I had to get them back in and it's messy it's dirty it can be smelly but it's so rewarding knowing that we are raising animals that are healthy that are happy and we are closing that middleman Uh, connection that we have when we go to the freezer but Mm. I also know that by raising our own vegetables and meat on the property when we have kids one day they're going to know where their food came from 
Yeah, which mm. is super important. And I feel yeah. like a lot of people don't still know that or or don't want to know that. Yeah, really. well, they're disconnected yeah. from it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I understand ignorance is bliss. But if we're ignorant to too much and we don't look into making those changes, then we're part of the problem rather than part of the solution. And Sam and I don't want mm. to do that. No. Um, I do want to ask, I know that you guys aren't meat eaters. So what's a way that your garden helps to sustain you and help mm. you to be more sustainable? Yeah, well, I think there's just so many different avenues of yeah sustainability to go down and you know changing how much meat you eat or where you get your meat from is a massive one and personally Mm. it's something that you know Scott and I have thought about and done our own personal research to come up with you know our what we want to do really yeah Yeah. and we've made that decision um in mind you know with with what happens in the world and I think you know large-scale agriculture is is not the way to go in a lot of areas but a lot of people don't have the choice but there's so many other ways to reduce your environmental impact and I think just growing your own food growing your own vegetables and fruit is one of the best things that we can do keeping things local uh so we grow that's a big one yeah keeping things local exactly yeah and as local as you can be if it can be your backyard then that's great or if it's you know the lady down the street or you've got a community garden growing your own food within like you know a 10 kilometer radius if if you can is probably the best way and Mm -hmm. is something that we're definitely trying to do so growing a lot of things that don't travel well is a good way to start so things like lettuce and herbs and greens just being self-sufficient in something is is a good way to start and I'm always feeling bad that I'm not growing enough food and you know comparing myself to other homesteaders and that I'm not getting a high yield or anything like that but like I am growing little things like herbs and and lettuce and I think that's huge that's yeah it makes a big difference yeah Yeah. I mean if everyone started to do that even just on a windowsill or microgreens like there's so many ways that that you can start and and it can be really overwhelming, which is maybe something we can touch on, just some little ways to become Go more forward. sustainable. Because, yeah, and we'd also love to hear uh, any comments or discussions from the listeners about how you grapple with this concept of sustainability and what it means to you. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, maybe we can talk about some of the best things that, that we that you do on a day-to-day basis yeah. like you wake up and what are some things that you do that you would consider sustainable yeah so I think one of the main things that I shifted to and changed early on is just the products that I'm cleaning with so I mentioned before like the products I put on my skin but the products that we use in our house I think we have now gotten to a point where I feel like they're as sustainable as we can be right now and I say right now because that could change into the future but currently being able to use vinegar as a disinfectant in our house works really well for our lifestyle and is really natural it's cheap which is sustainable for our wallets. And I think that's really important to be mindful of as well, that sustainability doesn't just necessarily need to be products, things, or a lifestyle. It can be sustainability with money, um, Mm -hmm. which is a struggle for us as we were growing up as teenagers. But anyways, (laughs) so just cleaning products like that. Um, Mm -hmm. Natural materials for uh, dishwashing so mm-hmm. things like natural detergent made from uh, lemon myrtle or made from local ingredients as opposed to gosh I don't even know what's in the other chemical I based don't products. want to know <laughs> just the smell of them now yeah. that I've been on this journey is just so overwhelming to my senses um, but using things like loofers in the kitchen and Uh, bamboo based and natural fibered scourers as opposed to plastic that sheds little microfibers that you might not even see but it might end up in your cooking pot and then you end up cooking a meal and consuming that and that's scary knowing that those things are not only just coming out into the sink but going into your food as well and when I notice things like that happening I made that shift in our cleaning and I think that's a big step um yeah, yeah. I, th- I think that's a really good place to start and something that I 
definitely need to be better with vinegar is just such an amazing it's addition so though good. we've used it so much just to get rid of all the mold around mm-hmm. from all this rain that we've been having but yeah I definitely need to get some tips from you I think <laughs> <laughs> that's okay I've got a wealth of knowledge now but it's taken a <laughs> while to get here like I think that's been the best thing about doing it slowly and knowing that each step that we take each thing that we change replace or start thinking about um even just going into a shop and looking at the labels of what you're buying and really realizing what's in them and if you can't pronounce most of the ingredients in there are you sure you want to consume it or absorb it through your skin so Mm. yeah it's been it's been a it's been a journey and I still don't feel like I can say we're fully sustainable I still can't say that every choice that I make is right or that something isn't right because like if you look in our house I'm sure if you were a really like diehard sustainable Mm -hmm. fanatic who's been doing this for years and years and generations and you feel like you've got everything to a T I feel like you'll come into our house and still see things that we can change and replace but I think it's important to keep it simple because we don't want to feel overwhelmed with having to change everything and if a product isn't sustainable but right now fits into our lifestyle it's important to have it there and it goes back to what I said earlier that we don't want to create more waste in the world by replacing everything straight away and really quickly when those things might not actually fit into your lifestyle. So can you think of any sustainability swaps or practices that are encouraged that might not fit into your life? Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of products that I see that I just don't really want or resonate Mm. with. Like I, um, you know, I go online and try and, you know, look at some some sites and things and you know I see a lot of different sustainable products but I just I feel like my house is already so cluttered that it's just it doesn't make any sense to me but I kind of prefer to go down the route of like op shops and secondhand Mm -hmm. things like I am literally on Facebook marketplace every single day just looking for random stuff that you know I'm not wanting it just because I need it I am just you know looking for things every few days we might need it around it might make our lives easier but it's not going to be brand new that's massive I'm sorry to interrupt you but that's huge because you're actually stopping that product going into waste you're stopping it from becoming landfill because a lot of things can't be recycled they can't and they just live out in the world we don't see them Mm. it's out of mind out of sight but they exist still out there so you're stopping that yeah exactly there are there are a few things though that I really have loved and think like they're kind of holy grail sustainable products Mm -hmm. I feel and I feel (laughs) I feel like for um, women and, and people who have periods, menstrual mm-hmm. products is is a massive thing. There's just so much waste that goes into these products and yeah. they're really advertised really well. Even some of, you know, the organic cotton ones, they kind of have that av- advertising of sustainability, but really it's just still a single use product. Yeah. And I am a really big advocate for Um, like cloth pads and menstrual cups they're like the best thing that has happened to my life like they've just made my life so much easier and I feel like they can be really scary for for girls and people who have periods but um, I feel hopefully maybe in in school and education we're moving towards that but it's just one thing that comes to mind Um, maybe TMI but I don't think so (laughs) good (laughs) but it's true like us women because of this need that we have I mean we go Mm. through menstruation and the products we have to use if they're not available to us like if the sustainable swaps aren't there or aren't talked about or aren't mentioned then you never know that what you are doing and naturally have to do anyways is creating this bigger problem out there in the world because it's a need you know it's it's something that we can't just stop (laughs) yeah and I think that's maybe a good way to come from it and to look at sustainability sometimes if you're unsure where to start is like what do you absolutely need and you know have to deal with every month or every day kind of thing and then just make those simple swaps rather than just buying an extra straw or an 
extra yeah. reusable cup or something like that yeah. when when you might not really need it yeah yeah that reminds me of um when we drove out your way just the other week um and we went on the road trip to pick up our bus uh just the amount of things that we bought along the way was really confronting because when you're on the road you're naturally exposed to all the conveniences of the road and um part of that is buying food and Mm. Our packaging is extreme. <laughs> I know, but so we got a smoothie on the road and then when we got it back into the car and I looked down at exactly what it was that I had in my hand, it was a plastic cup with a plastic lid with a plastic straw. Yeah. And we have been so good at using metal straws and um, making sure that there's uh, paper straws in the products that we're buying mm. but it was that one time that I didn't look and then being confronted with it in the car and then all the coffee cups as well I was like oh my gosh like this yeah. is something that I'm experiencing again and again every time we go on a road trip this is now something I can see that I can swap so yeah. instead of having three coffee cups that are plastic or even those compostable ones yeah are only compostable to an extent they take a long time i tried to break one down and it was it took over a year or so so i wouldn't recommend (laughs) yeah and so that's where like when you're noticing that that's the problem that you have in your life and that's a swap that you can make that's when you then go and make a switch so sam and i have actually invested in some really nice reusable cups that we have now we're going to endeavor to take it every time we go on a trip, anytime we're even going to a cafe or a restaurant, we're going to have them in our car. And this is a choice that we've only just made. Mm. Like we could have done it three years ago when we started swapping things out in our life, but back then it didn't seem necessary. And now it's been at a point where we're like, okay, this is something that is affecting us. This is something we can see is a problem in our life. Now we're going to do it. Yeah, it's a it's a gradual thing. And I think also it's also it's society. We can't change everything. Mm-hmm. We're going to make slip ups and mistakes or not even mistakes. We just we just can't really help it. Yeah. So I think normalizing things like, oh hey, can I just bring my own cup or can I just bring my own container to mm-hmm. the butcher or bread bag if you're getting yeah. bread or anything like that normalizing these little changes is then going to have a positive effect on yeah. businesses and flow on effect to get people to start thinking because you can't make someone be sustainable it's no. it it doesn't work <laughs> and that's it what's sustainable to you isn't sustainable to me isn't sustainable to someone else and it might be mm. um it it makes me think of cloth nappies like i know yeah. we don't have children <laughs> but i think Like the idea of nappies is very similar to menstrual products where it's something that you need to use because your baby is training. Like they're not going to know how to go to the toilet in the right place. And so the options out there, there's cloth nappies. I'm sure there's all kinds of different products out there that are marked as sustainable or eco-friendly. And then you've got the standard nappies that are the go-to and have been for a long time. Um, And I think in the future this is going to be something that I'm really curious to see which direction we go in because right now sitting here, Sam and I like, yep, cloth nappies is just going to be the way we do it. It's we're going to go through the washing that we need to do for it. We're like, it's just, it makes sense. But then I sit back and I have a think about how many times I've seen my sister change my baby niece, Mm -hmm. um, how many times she has to wash things. And then I think about, oh, we're going to be in a bus. We might not necessarily have a washing machine. So how are we going to navigate that? And I think that's something really important that sustainability, you might know the most sustainable option, but it might not be sustainable in your life. Um, And at different stages in our lives, uh, sustainable products may or may not be uh, useful. Yeah, I think you just got to try it out and and see what what happens. But I mean, I look at someone like you and I, you know, I I wouldn't see, I wouldn't think of you as a worse person or, or anything like that if you didn't use cloth nappies, because I also see everything else that you're doing yeah. to be sustainable and have that, that mindset. And that's what it comes down to, just having that mindset. If you're making a, you know, your decision based on whatever your beliefs or anything like that, as long as you're making it with, you know, your impact in mind, then that's mm. all you can really do. And yeah. you, you know, there's not much else really you can do you've got to live your life yeah (laughs) yes 
So I feel like I've kind of taken our conversation over to the product side of things. And I want to be conscious that products and sustainable swaps are really touch and go. There's a lot of companies out there that might sell you a product and let you know that it's the most sustainable option or that it's really eco-friendly and that might not always be the case. And I know this Mm. is something you're really passionate about. So did you want to touch more? Yeah, I mean, I touched on it a little bit before about how sustainability, sustainable products is really a buzzword at the moment, or at least I feel like it is. Yeah. But greenwashing is definitely a real thing. And it it really capitalizes on uh, environmental degradation in the world, just in terms of marketing these products, which, you know, you might often not need really on and, and marketing it with, you know, Uh, pictures of forests being destroyed and cleared and animals impacted and things Mm -hmm. like that which is really capitalizing on on these major problems and although a lot of companies you know aren't like you know that they don't directly do this they're often you know making positive change I think it's really important as consumers for us to really do our own research and look into where might the source of these ingredients come from, Mm -hmm. whether those uh, compostable cups are actually really, you know, that beneficial and comparatively to plastic, like, yeah, plastic is, is, is a major problem, but there's, you know, there's so many other options that we can go down like Mm. reusable cups and things like that because even compostable products are still taking ingredients from one place which is obviously having an environmental impact um and we're we're still having to consume and consume these these products and it's not just cups it's clothes and yeah it makes me think of organic cotton yeah exactly because organic cotton is usually grown on farms that are polycultures and you have nothing but the cotton um, which is a silkworm, isn't it? So it's a silkworm farm. I oh, think well. it's more just like the plant, the cotton plant. Is it a plant? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a, a worm. You can get silk wh- from wow. silkworms. I need but to do yeah. my research. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's okay. No, but Should cotton be. farms, so regardless of if they're a worm or a plant, mm. I mean, they're still spraying something. It's not chemical, but yeah. they spray things for the bugs because... Yeah, it's monoculture. Yeah. yeah, and they got to keep their plant alive or to keep their business there. Yeah. But because there is only the one plant, it's really destructive on the environment itself because plants, if you look out in nature, trees, plants, forests, they grow with many layers and many plants and with lots of diversity. Um, and so there, there still is an environmental impact that people aren't aware of when yeah. they are purchasing those types of products. Yeah. With all the troubles of technology, we kind of lost our place thanks to the camera, the mics, but the show Learning must go experience. on. Yes. Yeah. This is early days. It's only going to get better from here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know that the last few things that we were saying may have been a bit more like not so much negative, but more things like the problems that we can see out in the world and things to be Mm. conscious of. So we thought at least for the last little while in the podcast, we could talk about um, one thing that we are yet to change in our life um, to be more sustainable and more resourceful, two things that we have swapped and absolutely loved, and then three things that if you're only just starting on this journey or you're looking for some things that you can move forward with, uh, then those are the three things that we would suggest you start with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it is, yeah, still a very overwhelming topic and I feel like throughout our conversations or well, at least I have gotten a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's not a place for being overwhelmed. There's lots of little things that we can do, and we are doing. We're yeah. we're doing really well, and uh, this is also a good opportunity for listeners to tell us what you're doing because we can always <laughs> use uh, some advice and tips on how to be a little bit more sustainable or just live a little bit more of an environmentally conscious life, which mm-hmm. might be the the better term to use yeah. in the end. Just trying to reduce your environmental impact a little more. Yeah. So did you want me to do my list first or should we do like a, do the one together? Let's do one at a time. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that 
Um, I personally think we are yet to improve or to become more sustainable in is our use of um, electricity. And so this is something that we're pretty excited about is uh, we're actually converting a bus into a house. Um, And this is our way to try go a little bit off grid. um, And instead of using electricity and not only relying on someone else to provide us with power or with utilities, and be more responsible for it but we're then also going to be more connected to nature with the sun and being able to rely on her in telling yeah. us whether we can plug in our tv that day or not or whether we take a break um, so it's so us. exciting mm-hmm. i'm so excited to follow along your <laughs> your bus building yeah. journey it's going to be um definitely a different way of life but yeah i think it's a lifestyle that's going to suit us well yeah, yeah. I think mine, something that I am definitely yet to do, change up my lifestyle a bit is kind of more in like the cosmetics side of things mm. and not not plastic surgery, but just more <laughs> like cosmetic creams and makeup, like bath so products. Hard. Like I, I love a good bath mm. and I, I just don't have the time right now really to be making a lot of my own products, but I know there's a lot better products that I can definitely be using. So I'd like to move a little bit more towards that because it's just better for your skin. Like I have really sensitive skin and really struggle with finding products. So I have so many different bath creams and, you know, bath washes just to find something that works. Maybe making my own probably might be a better idea. I was going to yeah. say, you're being really hard on yourself because you actually inspired me to make Calendula self oh, because that that's is something one thing. that you make. That is one thing that I do use yeah. every day and have it in my bag here yeah. right now. <laughs> but yeah, like shampoo, conditioner and things like that. Like I love a good pamper session and uh, yeah. can probably be a little bit better on the sustainability <laughs> area there. <laughs> All right, so the next one is two things that we have swapped and absolutely loved. Um, and so I wrote down uh, natural fiber clothes, and you brought this up before as well, but just being able to go to an op shop and pick things that you love, but then be able to look at the label and see that it's natural. That, um, But not even just that, because if you're buying from an op shop, you're already taking it out of landfill, you're giving it a new life, um, and that's that's massive. Yeah. yeah. So my other thing is dog food. Um, we started, instead of going out and buying our own dog food, um, a lot of our, our dogs have started being really itchy lately, and we're not sure if that's contributing because of um, the environment we're in or their diet but we know that like what we eat impacts our whole system it impacts the way that our energy works and um, the way we feel like whether we get sick or whatever else and so our dog's diet is going to be the same way so I did some research into what they need to be healthier and so being able to put those things into their dog food and know exactly the ingredients going into their systems um, has been huge Mm. and I have loved that yeah that's a really really good swap Yeah. yeah something that I hadn't I kind of forget about because I suppose when you walk down the pet aisle, it's all marketed and yeah. there for you and easy. But yeah, yeah it's a really it, it's good been, one. It's actually been a really hard swap to make because mm. there is so much that I could put into it and there's so little research done into what they actually need, um, especially for itching as well. Like our vet gave us, in our opinion, some bad advice. So it's something mm. that I'm continuing to try to uh, look into. Yeah. yeah, really cool. Well, I suppose one of the things that we have definitely swapped is we now compost literally everything in our household. I don't throw out anything that is fresh or organic into the waste bin. We compost everything. So that even includes uh, the pet waste. So we've got two cats and they're mainly indoor cats. So, you know, they use the kitty litter. So we have a worm farm for the um, for the cat poo and then wow. we uh, compost and use the cat litter which is all biodegradable in the garden and a lot of people have a lot of things to say about you know composting cat waste and everything but it really is just a natural product you've got to be a little bit careful like we're not sp- spreading it around mm. lettuce and uh, edible greens or anything like that 
but I think being responsible for your pet waste if you have you know pets inside is is really important so mm. yeah composting is just one of my favorite things to do I'm just so interested in the life cycle of things breaking down and then literally so creating beautiful. gold yeah, yeah. <laughs> gold for the garden so that's definitely one thing that we have tried to do and I've noticed a lot of friends and family around me have also started doing that mm-hmm. too um, which is great to just you know have people interested in in the process and making it really easily accessible so yeah Yeah. I also just love talking about composting so if you ever (laughs) want to chat composting (laughs) like we can do a whole podcast on on composting um but another thing that I've swapped which is not quite a physical thing but I have really made an effort to research the impact that I have on my environment. Mm -hmm. So things like um, understanding how much water I'm using or looking at the products in food, trying Mm -hmm. to think about, okay, where have these actually come from and what is my physical impact on on the land? And, you know, you, you can go down that route and get a little bit depressed. But again, it's important to know because I think, you know, if you're looking at ways to swap um, and become a little bit more environmentally conscious, it's important to know where the impact is. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's that's something that we're, we're definitely trying to do and we're not perfect, but... No one is. No. no that's right. <laughs> yep. Um, and then the last one is three things that you guys can start with. So uh, whether you're looking for more inspiration of things that... Um, you may want to research further or may want to uh, consider or whether you are just starting out, you're feeling overwhelmed and you're hoping just to get a tip of like, this is where you should start. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so my three things are cook at home. All right. Stay at home as often as you can fall in love with it. Get used to cooking your own meals. Find out what you really love eating. And that's going to make such a huge impact because you're not driving anywhere. You're not um, buying products from other people, but you're also just going to feel more fulfilled. And yeah, I, I love cooking our meals. It brings us so much joy to come together, cook dinner, or just me relaxing on the couch after a hard day of work while Sam cooks a meal for me uh, mm. just makes me love him so much more yeah. so it's an, an experience as well as you get something delicious at the end of yes, the day <laughs> exactly did you want to say one of yours and then I'll do yeah. one of mine next yeah I suppose one of mine is something that you can do is just get involved in something local in your mm-hmm. community so something that comes to mind for me is getting involved in community gardens or a environmental project going on in my area so dogs out. we have a little addition uh, currently Sorry, come on you can see it come here sorry hey, no. you want to be on the podcast come here lie down lie down lie down <laughs> you stay all right you can um, be the little yes. mascot <laughs> The one that got away. So you were saying to connect um, locally? Yeah. So learning about different projects that might be going on in your area is one of the best things that you can do that might be a little bit more sustainable. So you can learn so much from just being out in your community and, you know, going across to the neighbor and looking at what they might be growing and just getting involved locally yeah. uh, is a great way. There's a lot of like environmental projects going on, restoration projects, um, whatever really you're interested in, see if there's something local in your area that you can get involved with. Yeah. Cause friends can help you along this journey more than anyone else. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Something that's more to do with products is for me, cotton buds. All right. So things in the beauty department that might seem overwhelming at first cotton buds is probably one of the simplest ones that you can start with so if you still have plastic get bamboo you know like if you uh, sam actually has a different alternative completely and it's like this squishy thing that like squirts water into his ear and interesting yeah Yeah, so like it's again going back to researching the products think about things that you're using most often which cotton buds for us is something we use I'm like really conscious of like I get ear infections really easily and so that's a huge one for me Um, yeah no that's cool which seems really simple and easy to start with yeah yeah 
Another one that I had on my list is to grow something fresh. Yes, I was considering doing that too. (laughs) We are gardeners and homesteaders, so I have to include this one, I feel. And that can just be as simple as growing microgreens. If you've never grown anything before or you're overwhelmed by gardening, you don't even need a garden to grow something fresh. Mm -hmm. And to have your own fresh food that you can add on to a salad or a sandwich microgreens are definitely a good place to start and they're really cheap you don't need a lot of soil or Mm -hmm. infrastructure or anything so yeah i'd start with microgreens and that's awesome taste your own fresh food (laughs) (laughs) and so simple because you can just put them on the windowsill like you don't need a lot of space at all yeah and grow all year round too that's so good yeah um the last one that i have on my list is just start looking at labels so look at the labels on your clothes look at the labels on products that you buy um look at labels on anything that you do and you're going to start learning so much about what you're consuming you're going to start learning so much about what things are made of so it goes back to cooking your own food sometimes you might look at a label and go oh I've got all these ingredients at home it's going to be so much easier and cheaper to make this meal at home or to make this product rather than just go and purchase it so yeah try to close that consumerism gap wherever you can because um, yeah, sometimes it's just as simple as starting to understand what's in the products. Yeah, yeah no, that's a really good one. The last one on my list is just to start monitoring something. So just pick one thing in your life, like whether that be electricity or water or your groceries and understand the patterns that you are that that's happening in your life and see again what your impact might be and then see how you might be able to change it a little bit um over winter and summer obviously electricity changes and water changes but i think there is a lot of um you know a lot of good to be able to measure our impact i suppose Mm -hmm. and um yeah monitoring things has really been a game changer for us to start a list and then gradually make small little sustainable changes here and there yeah and the coolest thing about that is that you don't have to start making the change right away yeah you can build your way up into it and um yeah so if you're feeling overwhelmed it's a good place to start yeah 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 so thank you so much for another great podcast and yeah. um, a great conversation, one that can sometimes be quite challenging to bring up and um, to start talking about because there's so many opinions and ways to move forward in it. Um, but I think one that's really valuable. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we'll try and, you know, be better each and every day. But, you know, the whole thing about feeling overwhelmed, you're not alone because it no. is overwhelming, but there's lots of things that we can do. So. Yeah please let us know what your top sustainability tips are and uh, yeah, maybe we can chat about that in a future podcast as well. Yeah. Remember to like, review, do all the things that you might do to a podcast. Um, It helps to support us and hopefully build a community and get more people involved with the conversation. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, I think we're going to go and have a nice home cooked lunch. Oh, yes. Bye, Sam. And uh, yeah, have a good afternoon. So thank you so much for watching and listening. And we'll see you next time. See you guys next time. Bye.